MMA Fight Corner. This is Heidi Fang for MMA Fight Corner speaking with Raquel Rocky Pennington, who's fighting Jessica Andrade at USC 171. That's coming up March 15th at Dallas, Texas. Raquel, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much and appreciate you taking the time to join the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, you've had this great run here with the Ultimate Fighter. You got down to the semifinals on the first season that was ever co-ed. And uh, you actually were uh, one of the uh, fighters in the finale. And you took on Roxanne Modafferi and took home a unanimous decision. So tell us what it's been like for you since that experience and getting that win. Um, You know, it's been a great experience. It was actually a tough ride through the whole Ultimate Fighter um, you're definitely the ultimate fighter because you passed that ultimate challenge. And so, I mean, just going through my war with Justin and then um, the time period fighting 10 days later, Jessica um, Raposi, I mean, it was just a brutal experience. But having that opportunity to get back into the cage and fight Roxanne, um, you know, it, it was a dream come true. I mean, the ultimate fighter wasn't the only path into continuing to chase my dream of being a UFC fighter and hopefully one day being a world champion. But, um it just, uh, you know, that was my, like I said, it was the first step in getting to where I want to be. And I had kind of a rough fight camp going into that, but my coach was like, we just need the W. And then from here on out, uh, we're going to really focus, hit things that we need to hit. And now I got the fight lined up with Jessica and I'm pretty excited. So speaking of moving up those ranks, Jessica's ranked at number nine. You're coming in solid here at number 13. Do you see this as a huge opportunity for you to obviously uh, shake up things in the division? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, we all want to continue working our way up the ladder, especially me. I mean, I want to get to that number one spot, and I'm going to do anything that it takes. And, I mean, I feel like the fact that I got offered the fight when Juliana, the ultimate fighter winner, got injured, I mean, there was all the girls chasing that fight, and the fact that they offered it to me, I think that was great. It kind of opened my eyes to a lot and made me give me a little bit more motivation. And to know that she's ranked higher than me and I have this chance to, you know, I mean, it just pushes me that much harder because I'm working my way up that much faster. You, you talk about Juliana Pena and her injury, which was extremely unfortunate for her. How many of the girls from the house have you really kept in touch with? I see you sometimes on Twitter speaking with Jessamine and a, a little bit with Shayna Baszler also. So have the group of you ladies remained pretty tight? Uh, Yeah, I mean, from time to time, I still talk to Jessica Ricosi on the phone. I talk to... Peggy every now and then on um, Twitter, and the ones that I do remain a lot closer with was uh, Jessamine and Shayna. I've seen uh, Roxanne. I mean, we talked a little bit after our fight, and then uh, here and there, I went out to Vegas and trained with Misha for her fight against Ronda. So, I mean, I've seen Jessica, or uh, Roxanne and a few other girls out there, and then um, for the most part, I mean, it was just, it was kind of a bonding experience, so we built relationships in the house to where it's something you just can't walk away from, you know? Yeah. Does that make it any more difficult for you looking ahead to the future, knowing that right now with the depth of the women's division that you'll eventually more than likely have to face another one of your former castmates again? No, not at all. I mean, at first it was kind of weird. Um, just with the idea of living in the house with your opponent and stuff, but at the same time it was a great growing experience for me, just getting to be around all the other fighters, seeing how other fighters, uh, react in the fight situation and things like that and we all know that I mean this is our profession this is what we do and we can have friendships outside of the cage uh, besides Rhonda and Misha <laughs> but mo- for the most part everybody can have friendships outside the cage <laughs> and when it comes time to step in there we know it's business and I mean that's exactly what it's going to be we all are hungry for that same spot and we're all going to have to fight and we knew that from the get-go. Well, let's talk a little bit about your upcoming fight with Jessica here. She's got a ton of finishing power out of her 10 wins that she has on record. She's had five of them by way of knockout, four of them by way of submission. So you, you I'm sure, see her as a pretty dangerous opponent. Uh, what do you see as your strengths coming in facing her? You know, I mean, I'm a well-rounded fighter. Everybody sees me as this crazy brawler and everything just because of the ultimate fighter. But truth of the matter is, I'm a crazy submission artist, too. I've uh, won plenty of fights via submission, and, I mean, I train it day in and day out with guys who come at me like they want to kill me. I mean, they don't treat me like I'm a female in the gym, so when it comes to me fighting a girl, it just it feels 
feel so much different to me. I mean, the girls don't hit half as hard. They don't do anything. And I think that's why on the Ultimate Fighter, when Dana made his comment, like, this girl can take shots and make it look like it's nothing, because I can. I take shots from a girl, but I take shots from those guys every day, and it's just something that doesn't faze me anymore, you know? I mean, I'm training my body to be completely tough. And when it comes to the fight, you know, I know Jessica's a hungry fighter. She comes out like a little firecracker, and I have a teammate who's exactly around her height, and he's a little firecracker himself, and me and him just, we go crazy. But it's exciting, it's eventful, and one way or another, I don't give up, and I fight until I'm completely on top, and that's exactly what I plan to do in this fight. I plan to dominate in every position, and if I get caught in a bad position, get my way out and continue to fight my fight. Man, you really seem to have a like total sense of urgency about making a statement in your second UFC fight. Uh, how important do you still feel it is as a woman to go in there and to prove that you're just as capable as any other competitor in any other division? You know, I mean, with the women's division being small the way that it is and stuff, and a lot of people still are kind of against the idea of women fighting, but I mean, it's going to take a long time and I think being one of the first women that was on the ultimate fighter and everything and one of the first ones that was into the UFC I mean we're making that path for all the upcoming fighters who are going to eventually follow in our footsteps and it's important to me to just go out there and perform and do what I do best and I think that's going to be enough speaking for itself um but I mean I do want to continue to gain the respect that us women need and that we deserve so do you feel like there's more or less pressure after making your UFC debut and making it all official with your win over Roxy? Do you do you feel like that kind of the getting that win in your first fight kind of lessens the pressure on you? Or do you feel like that same sort of uh, feeling that you had before your debut, like just to keep going out there and making a statement every time? You know, I mean, I get crazy emotions when it comes to every fight. I mean, Good night. You're going into a cage and getting locked in there and a crotch from you as somebody who wants to beat the living crap out of you, you know? So, I mean, emotions run high and everything, but as far as it comes, uh, going into the Ultimate Fighter, going into my UFC debut, I just kind of try to take away from that extra pressure. I try to remember that it's just another day in the office and not really put the extra pressure of, I need to win this fight, I need to do this. Because, I mean, I think the more that you do that, you start to think a little too much and it you just make yourself more nervous because you're trying too hard and you're not performing to your best potential. So now that I got my UFC debut, I mean, I was extremely nervous for that, just the fact of being back in front of a crowd and everything and knowing that it was a huge opportunity that I had to win that fight so I can get into the UFC. So, I mean, given that being taken away, I feel like this is just another fight. I know each fight is a stepping stone in my career and every fight's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I take it for what it's worth, but I kind of take that pressure off of it. There is a few things also lately in uh, the world of WMMA in the news, and I was curious to get your take on something. Joe Rogan had said that there's going to be crazy madness coming into the women's bantamweight division in the UFC that was really going to shake things up. Now, a lot of fans are starting to speculate and think that maybe Gina Carano might make a comeback and try to challenge Ronda for her title. Uh, what would what would your reaction be if Gina Carano were in fact to return and come uh, to fight in the UFC? You know, I think that would be awesome. I mean, uh, when I first started watching this sport about seven years ago, Gina Carano was the first fight I ever seen. She was fighting Tanya Evinger. So the fact that me getting ready to go into the Ultimate Fighter and fighting Tanya Evinger, the first girl I ever seen fight, which is something that really meant a lot to me. And I felt like I was really making my way in the world. And when it came to Gina, she's an awesome fighter. Uh, and I think she threw away a lot of talent just given the fact, I mean, she took a loss, and I don't think she was really used to losing, for one. And then uh, she kind of went into her movie business and everything else that she did. But I think it would be great for her to come back. She deserves that opportunity and everything, and it'll just be a great run and more girls for us. Fantastic. And just one last thing that I know that you participate a lot in is anti-bullying. And I've seen that you tweet out a lot about it. Uh, is there any specific anti-bullying campaign that you belong to as far as trying to make awareness uh, for it in the public? Or is it just generally something that you like to, and prefer to speak out against? 
Um, you know, I worked with RMA, Redemption Martial Arts, who's really big into the anti-bullying. And then I also do guest speaking um, at different places. And I just did guest speaking for the Devon for Life Foundation. But one thing that really just got me into the whole anti-bullying thing was the fact that, I mean, it's becoming so popular and kids are just, I mean, it's ridiculous how it's becoming, and the fact that I got to go into the Ultimate Fighter and share my story and stuff, and seeing how people were inspired and people reach out to me and feeling like I can actually make a difference is one thing that really helped me to step up and do that. And then on top of that, I mean, in high school, given the fact that I'm a lesbian and stuff, I had a friend in high school who committed suicide because nobody would accept her for wanting to be a lesbian and everything else, and. I just felt like back then I was so helpless and I couldn't do anything. And I now I feel like now this is my opportunity to actually step up and stand for people who, I mean, they might have negative thoughts at the time or like just feel too within themselves. And I feel like I can kind of make an impact to change that. That is really awesome. And we appreciate that they, there are people like you who aren't afraid that are willing to go out there and stand up for what you believe in. And by the way, on that note, congratulations on your engagement to Brooke. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, you've obviously been a competitor for quite a long time. You've been amateur since 2009 and pro for the last couple of years. You uh, have gone through everything that you did with the Ultimate Fighter. But there's one last question I have for you. Uh, What really went down at UFC 170 between Phil Baroni and Bobby Green? And were you, in fact, the one to break up a tussle? Uh, (laughs) um, You know, we were all sitting there and everything, and it was just, I think it was a huge ego thing, you know, the guys, um, and Phil, he just kind of, I don't even know how it started, I mean, we were, I was sitting right next to Bobby Green, and comments were starting to be made and everything, and Phil was just kind of antagonizing him, and he was like, let's go, I'll kick your butt, and all this other stuff, and just the ego really came out, and so, of course, Bobby being a guy and having an ego, too, he was just like, you know, I'm not going to back down, so he jumped up. And it wasn't so much that I jumped in the middle of them or anything. I kind of just grabbed Bobby, and I was just like, no, dude, it's not worth it. Like, you have a fight coming up in April. Do you really want to ruin the opportunity that you have right now because you want to sit here and let your ego get in the way and not back down to some guy? Like, dreams are too high for that, so don't do it. And Phil was still going on and on and on. But, I mean, I think for the most part, we got Bobby calmed down with the fact of just saying that and everything. And so he finally just sat back down, and we kind of kept each other distracted by just kind of making bets on the fights and everything and pulling out money. And so that kind of helped. And then Phil moved behind me, and I kind of started talking to him about the fights and getting his mind frame and something different. But there was other people around who kind of just helped out, and it was just like, hey, you guys need to knock it off. And, uh, of course, the cops came over and stuff, so that helped a little bit. Oh, wow. (laughs) Well, we're glad that you prevented anything from getting out of hand. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you for your time. And if you have any sponsors or anybody you'd like to thank uh, before we let you go, uh, now would be the time. Yeah, um, you know, first and foremost, I want to send a shout out to all the people who support me, all my fans, my um, family, my friends, everybody, because without that, I wouldn't be to where I'm at without all the motivation and everything that I need, especially on the days that I don't feel like getting up and doing anything. And then, I mean, of course, uh, Brooke, who's always been there, and she deals with all my mood swings and the crap I go through when I'm in training camp. And for my uh, my team to the MMA, my coach, Mark Fiore, and then my sponsors, um, Don Voss with Potential, uh, Potential Action Therapy, who's helped me through all these injuries and battle wounds that I get doing this crazy sport. Um, Tiffany Graham, who has become my nutritionist and also my chiropractor and is just keeping me in phenomenal shape. Uh, Rev Gear, Zong Gear, Integrated Lab Technologies, Revolutus Fightwear, Enigma Fightwear, Bulletproof Executive, and for all the other ones, uh, everybody else who's been there and helped me. It's kind of hard to keep up with everybody. No problem. You got quite a list there. So (laughs) that's awesome. (laughs) Cool, cool. Well, again, Raquel, thank you again for your time. And uh, if you want to tweet out to Raquel Pennington, I believe it's at Rocky P MMA, right? For sure. Okay, cool. Well, again, Raquel, thank you for your time and for joining the MMA Fight Corner and best of luck on your fight. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. Have a good night. Thank you. You too.